I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. Right now we're speaking with Rebecca Nelson who is the Teacher of the Year for the Alberta Elementary School District. Congratulations. Thank you. So tell us about yourself. Tell us about your school and tell us uh, about uh, what grade you teach. Um, Alberta Elementary is a very small district. We have just one elementary and one middle school. Um, Alberta is quite close and dear to me, a little more personal for me because I grew up in Alberta and was a student there from kindergarten all the way through eighth grade. So I, I really enjoy coming back as a teacher. I currently teach sixth grade and I absolutely love it. So what's it like to go back to the school that you went to and, and come back as a teacher? What kind of a feeling is that? <laughs> Everything seems smaller <laughs> now that I'm, you know, an adult. Um, but it's it brings back a lot of good memories. I remember being in second grade and that's where I decided I wanted to become a teacher. So it's kind of nice to come full circle and be back there as a teacher. And, and who was your second grade teacher? Um, Mrs. Nancy Zielinski. And what was it that, that she did that kind of inspired you to be a teacher? Oh, I just had a, a good feeling being in her class. I just enjoyed school at that age, um, liked going every day. Um, felt very welcomed being in her room. So that's just kind of where I can remember it all began. Mm, that's interesting. You can think back that far and <laughs> know when it was. Do you, do you have an exact moment? No. No, just you just, just knew. Just an overall yeah, yeah. sense that that's kind of what, what I wanted to do. So tell us about your school and about your school community, uh, about your students. Um, our community is pretty small. Um, I think I had looked up through the Census Bureau in 2010 and we're only you know, a little over eight square miles in the city of Alberta. Um, so it, it's a pretty small district. Um, our, a lot of our, our families tend to stay in the area. Now that I'm coming back as a teacher, a lot of my students are those from uh, uh, people I went to school with. So now I'm like, oh, I know your mom or I know your dad, we went to school here together. And so a lot of the, the families do typically stay in the area, which is kind of nice. So with that kind of a small school environment, um, what kind of a relationship do you have with the families in the community? Is it, is it pretty close-knit? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that saying of everybody knows everybody kind of fits in our, our community. Mm -hmm. So. And so how does that play into parental involvement? Um, for, for many uh, families, there are some that are, are very involved. You know, they have multiple children that have gone through school and being students there themselves, they feel a, a sense of pride of having their own children go there as well. So there are many parents that come to the school and help out and volunteer. So how long have you been a teacher? Uh, this is my 14th year of teaching. At Alberta? No, not okay. at Alberta. I, um, I've been at Alberta for eight of those years. Mm -hmm. So. So in your time as a teacher, what kind of uh, changes and challenges have you seen over the, over the years? What are some of the big challenges you face as a teacher? Um, some of the big challenges I face as a teacher have to do with um, for me, I, I have a little bit of a, a background in special education and so for me, I think my personal biggest challenge is making sure everybody feels included in my classroom. Um, other challenges just have to do with our area, being rural, being um, you know, a, a district that's not necessarily economically rich. It's, it's important for the students to come to school and to feel accepted and welcomed and, and to get that, that sense of uh, belonging and community in the classroom. And so uh, over that amount of time, you've probably seen some changes with you know the need for technology and mm -hmm. things like that. Now, how are you able to kind of juggle and manage some of those changes as well? Um, our school has been able to get smart boards in the classroom, which um, when I taught at Alberta at the beginning of the, those eight years, um, was one of the first districts to get some of the smart boards in the classroom. And so that's been a, a great teaching tool. Um, I did for a short time move out of state with my family for my husband's job and they did not have smart boards. And so I kind of felt at a loss to not have that type of technology and be able to use it and implement it in my classroom with students. So that's been something that I think has been very beneficial uh, for the classroom and for teaching. So you teach sixth grade? Mm -hmm. And so you're preparing those students to enter middle school? Yes. 
what kind of special things do you need to do to prepare them for that kind of, it's, 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 a, it's a leap. Mm -hmm. oh, sixth to seventh grade is a big it, leap. It is a leap, and, and I've been in a middle school setting before. Um, actually, the sixth grade had been at middle school for some time, okay. and so it's been moved to the elementary. And so I kind of have that knowledge that I can pass on to them, letting them know what's to come and what to expect. And the, um, the biggest thing is just making sure that they're organized and that they uh, plan things. The middle school uses planners for students. And, and coming to middle school, you're not just in one classroom all day any longer. You're moving around. You have several classes, several teachers. And so I, I try and, and let the students know that they need to um, use their planners every day. And I, I try and let them know it's kind of a life skill when, you know, as, as an adult, I don't know where I'm supposed to be all the time after work or taking my own children to practices or appointments. I have my handy dandy phone that I put things in my calendar. And so it's just trying to teach them those, those beginnings of those life skills that they're going to need for middle school and that transition, making sure that they are aware of the, the things that they need to complete in their homework and assignments and things. They have to be a lot more self-reliant as yes. they get older. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is the biggest challenge teachers face today? Um, well, the biggest challenge teachers face... I, I guess teachers... I, I sometimes feel the sense of... of um, being held responsible um, for the students and their progress and their achievement and teaching kids throughout the whole year and then having you know one big test at the end of the year and and um, that's what we are basing how we have performed throughout the year as well and it, it's kind of a, a difficult thing to do throughout the year just building up to this one one type of a test where there are so many other things that we teach students besides just the academics. It's mm -hmm. more, you know, social and, and life kind of skills that we're also teaching them. And I think that's a big thing for, you know, hard thing for teachers, that frustration of, you know, we do more than just teach them subjects. And the students and their achievements is more than just how well they can read or how they can manipulate numbers. And so, I think for teachers, sometimes they, f they feel kind of a, a, a negative feeling from the public or from others because they might not be, you know, the students might not be achieving well. And I think that's, that's difficult for teachers and a big issue for them. To there are a lot of factors that go yes. into a student's success. Yes. Yeah. So what motivates you every day to go into the classroom and work with the kids? <laughs> no, some days it's quite frustrating. Some days I feel like, you know, I'm, I want to cry because I'm so frustrated. But other days, it's sometimes harder not to laugh because of what students say or do, you know, and, and it's kind of that unexpected interaction with the students that I, I look forward to. Mm -hmm. Just their, you know, moments of, oh, I finally get it, or, you know, asking those off-the-wall silly questions, you know, what's it going to be like today? So it, it's, it's just always fun. I just like interacting with the kids and, and uh, Makes you want to go to work every yeah, day. Yeah, it does. So you were saying earlier that, you know, from second grade on, you knew you wanted to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. what, what do you say to those people who um, are thinking about teaching, aren't sure, and, you know, what kind of a sales pitch would you give them <laughs> to say, think about teaching as a career? Uh, definitely have to have a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, if you want to be in a profession that you feel like you you've done something of great worth. It might not be something that you know you're doing every day that makes a big deal, but over time, you do feel that sense of accomplishment. You do feel that sense of, of um, being a part of the greater good and helping kids and teaching kids. And, and so, so if you want to be a part of the greater good, think about being a teacher. Uh -huh. All right, well, thank you for being with us. We've been speaking with Rebecca Nelson, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Alberta Elementary School District for 2015. Congratulations, and thanks for joining us. Thank you.